Good morning, boys and girls. It's Miss Ross again, or Nanny. Well, welcome to story time on Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. Oh, this book that I have today is wonderful. It's called Can I Be Your Dog? And it's about a little dog who is homeless, and he's looking for a home. You will love it as much as I did. Boys and girls, I think you will really like this book today. It's called Can I Be Your Dog? And it's by a man named Troy Cummings. You know, I'm going to tell you or give you a word, and you may not know it. I'm sure your parents do it. And the word is homeless. Homeless. Sometimes homeless people, and what it means is they don't have a home. They don't have a home. They don't have the beds to sleep in at night. And maybe you've seen on television homeless people. Sometimes they live in tents. And sometimes they just live on the street. And they might have a, a bag with all their clothes in it and a blanket. And they'll sit on the street. And sometimes they ask for money to help them buy food to eat and all. But this story today is about a dog that was homeless. I don't know how he got to be that way. But he didn't have a home. I don't know if somebody put him out or what, but I think you will enjoy it. Can I be your dog? Now, on this page, you see this little dog, and he's so cute. And he has a pencil or a marker, and he's got it stuck in his mouth, and he's writing a note. Oh, well, you know, dogs can't really write, but anyway, we'll just pretend he can. <laughs> And he's writing a note, if you'll look right here. So let's see what in the world's going on. And look, here's a pasteboard box over here. You know what? I'll bet this is where he has to live. I bet he doesn't have a home or food. So I bet he has to live in this pasteboard box, don't you? Oh, poor thing. Now, oh, what a pretty page. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the page. Here is a yellow house. Here are children playing in the yard. Look, look, he threw the football at her. Here's one back in the swings. Here's a fire hydrant. Now, look at the mail lady. The mail lady is coming down the street, and she has an envelope in her hand, and she's fixing to put it in this mailbox. Let's see what this, what, what it is. I wonder if that's a note that the dog was writing. I bet it is. And let's see. It says, here's what the note said. Dear people at Yellow House. Woof, 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 woof. Can I be your dog? I'm potty trained and I have my own squeaky bone. And also, I love to play. <laughs> and he drew a picture of a bone there. I see you have a cat. But I'm willing to work with you. Who's a good dog? Who's a good dog? I am. And he signed it, Sincerely, Arfie. And today he's got one of his footprints on it. Now, at the very bottom of the letter of the note, he's got a word. It says, P.S. Now, P.S., anytime you see that on the bottom of a note, a card, what it stands for is postscript. Postscript. And somebody might, after they got through reading the note or writing it, they might have thought of something else they wanted to add. So they go back and put a P.S. postscript. And in his postscript, he says, I know every house on Butternut Street, but I ask you first. All right, let's go back and think. Now, this dog has no home. He has nowhere to sleep except that pasteboard box. And he has nothing to eat except what he can find around on the ground of the street. And the mailman is bringing a letter to the people on Butternut Street in the Yellow House. And we see what he wants to do. He wants to see if they will take him in as a, do as a, a friend and a pet. And he ended, I know every house on Butternut Street, but I ask you first. Now... Do you think that these people in this house are going to answer his note or his letter? Let's see if they do, and let's see if they decide to keep him. Oh, my goodness. Look at this picture. 
He has the saddest look on his face, and he's reading the note. Here's the note, and I'm going to read it to you. Dear Orphie, we're so sorry, but you cannot be our dog. Our cat is, mm, our cat's allergic to dogs. <laughs> Good luck in your search, the honey wells. Oh, and maybe you know what allergic means. Maybe some of you have allergies. And if you're allergic to something, it means you either, uh, you can't be around it. You may, you may, skin may break out or your nose may run and you have a cough or something. But that's what allergic means. And they're saying, good luck in your search. But they would take him in, but their cat is allergic to dogs, the honey wells. And he's so sad. Bless his heart. <laughs> Oh, I see another note. Let's see who this is to. This note is to the lady that runs the butcher shop. The butcher shop. And the name of that butcher shop is Chop Chop. Now, on the door, you see a sign that says open. So that means she's open for business. Now, and you may not know what a butcher shop is. It is very much like a grocery store. In fact, a butcher shop just sells meat. And if you look through the window, you can see her, and you look in the counter, and you see all the good pieces of meat. There's a chicken and some steaks and uh, ribs and roast beef and stuff. But that's what a butcher shop is. It's very much like a grocery store. My daddy used to have a, a grocery store, and he had good steaks, too. Now, you see on this side, you see the little male lady walking up, and she's got the note, and she's looking at it. And she, uh, here's the mailbox outside the butcher shop. Oh, my goodness, and she's going to put that note in. I'm going to now read you what that note says. Dear butcher lady, can I be your dog? I think your butcher shop would be a great place for a puppy like me. I could keep the floor nice and clean. <laughs> and it signed Arfie, and then he put a footprint down here, too. Now, he could keep it clean. He could pick up all the little scraps of meat and eat them, couldn't he? And you see up here, chop, chop, butcher shop. And then you see the, the knife where they cut the meat. Now, let's see if the lady in the butcher shop will keep him. What do you think? I hope she does. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. He's back at home in his pasteboard box. Nom, nom, nom. Oh, my goodness. Let me read you what the butcher shop lady said. <sighs> Look, pal, I got a bone to pick with you. Last time I let a dog into my shop, a dozen meatballs went missing. Sorry, but there's no way I'm taking in a pooch. And a pooch is a nickname for a dog. And it's signed, Veronica Shank, Butcher. P.S. No hard feelings. Enjoy these dry giblets and good luck finding a home. And the giblets are just little pieces of meat and she's put them in a plastic bag and she has taped them to the note. And there he's just read it. He's eaten all the giblets. There's an empty a plastic bag. He's so sad. I'm going to read that again. Look, pal, I got a bone to pick with you. Last time I let a dog into my shop, a dozen of my meatballs went missing. Sorry, there's no way I'm taking in a pooch. And she signed it, Veronica Shank, Butcher. But P.S., no hard feelings. Enjoy these dry giblets and good luck finding a home. Oh, my goodness. So there he still has no home and he's back in the box, isn't he? Wonder if there's anybody else. Oh, <laughs> look at this picture. Look closely. This is the lady, the male lady, and she does have another note. And what do you see here, sitting right here? It looks like a fire truck to me. It is. Look, Butternut Fire Department Five, number five. So they must have five fire departments in that town. Oh, so let me see what his note to the fire department says. Dear fire station number five, can I be your dog? I can fetch your boots, and fetch means go pick your boots up, 
with, he'd grab them with his mouth and bring them to him, to the fireman. I can fetch your boots. Plus, let's just say I know my way around a fire hydrant. <laughs> That's often where they go to use the potty. I've sniffed out every single one on Butternut Street, and yours is the shiniest. And he signed it off it and put his print again. And here's a fire hydrant right here where the firemen get water to put out the fires. Now, if you go back over here, and this is the fire department, if you look very closely, it's hard to see it, but up in this top picture, you see a fireman, and he's sitting there. Looks like he's drinking a cup of coffee. And they have, every firehouse usually has a dog, and there's their, their firehouse dog. So, I wonder if they're going to take him in. I hope so. Wouldn't he have a good time living in a, a fire department? Well, she's going to leave the note there, and let's see. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Look at this page. Look at this page. There he is. He's read the note. And there he is. I believe he's using the potty right there at the fire department. And the note says, Butternut Street Fire Station. Dear applicant. And that means somebody who had applied for the to stay with him or for, applied for a job. Thank you for your interest in working with the Butternut Street Fire Station. Unfortunately, the position of fire dog has already been filled. We will keep your letter on file. Best wishes, wishes in your search. Station number five. And bless his heart. They've already, and you saw that fire dog. I showed it to you up in the window, didn't you? So here's the letter. And he, he just has had another sad, sad letter back, hadn't he? Wonder if there's anywhere else, anywhere else he could go. Let's see. Or try. Oh, my word. Look a uh, here. Oh, what is this? It's a dump or junkyard, isn't it? Look at that picture. Ooh, all these old vehicles, and that means cars and trucks. And here's the man back here, and he doesn't look real happy at all, does he? He's sitting on a concrete block and he's just frowning and look at the little house back there it's got a broken window it looks like a needs to be in the junkyard doesn't it and it's called butternut dump and it's all locked up here it's got a chain on the gate and it's locked up here's an old tire somebody's thrown out and the mail lady she's got the saddest look on her face she's putting the a letter in there to the guy at the butternut dump, the junkyard, and it's from Offy. Let's see what he said. Dear junkyard guy, I'm not gonna lie, you're next, my next to last choice. And that means he doesn't have but one more. But these past few days have been rough, 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 rough. Oh, these days have been so rough, I can't find a home. So please, can I be your dog? I don't eat much, and I can bark if people try to steal your junk and stuff. Hopefully yours, Arfie. <clears throat> he put another print down. Now what do you think that junkyard man is going to say? Surely he'll give him a home. He's so tired of trying. Look at this. Here is his answer, and it's just written on an old scrappy piece of paper. And it says, Dear Mutt, get lost. And Mutt's so just a name for a dog sometimes that people call dogs Mutts. Look at him. He's got this he got his note in his mouth, and he's walking away with another sad look on his face. And he's going through the, trying to get out of the junkyard. He's digging up dirt as he goes. Dear Mutt, get lost. Well, that wasn't very nice, was it? No, it wasn't. I can't believe that this poor puppy dog has not been able to find a home. Can you? Let's see what the next page says. Oh, my word, look at this picture of this house. 
Do you think anybody lives there? Hmm, I don't think so. Look at it. The glass is out of the window. This window's boarded up, the door's boarded up, and there's a, a, a break in the roof, and the grass is all grown up everywhere, and, and one of the uh, blocks in the, the walk outside is gone. My goodness, do you think he's going to try to get to live there? Let's see, here's a letter, and it says, now remember this is his last time he's going to try. Dear last house on Butternut Street, can I be your dog? I see that your yard is full of weeds and that your windows are broken and there's a funny smell. But I'm not picky. <laughs> I'm just lonely. And my name is Arfie. And there's his footprint again. He's not picky. He doesn't care anymore, does he? He just wants somewhere to sleep and somebody that will feed him. Oh, if nobody lives there, what's going to happen? Well, oh, this is the letter that he sent to that house, to whoever lived in that house. Last house on Butternut Street. This is an envelope, and here's his return address. That means he's the one that sent it, Arfie, from Soggy Box in the Alley. And remember, that's where he lives. And he sent it to Last House on Butternut Street. But here's what the post office did. They put a note on it. It says, return to sender, nobody at this address. So when the lady came back to the house, the post lady came back to the house, that's what she found. There's nobody at that house. There's nobody that can take him in. That's what happened to his letter. They sent it back to the post office. And look at him here. Here's the letter at the, at the, on the ground at the, at the uh, right front of his feet. And raindrops falling down on top of him. And he's so upset. Oh, he's crying so hard. What can happen now? Oh, he goes back. He goes back to his box. He's so tired and worn out. He cried, look, it's still raining. The raindrops are coming into the box even. He's even got a little table over here beside his box. Here are people out on the sidewalk with their umbrellas, and they're going by. And so he climbs back in his box, and it's still raining if you'll look, and you see how dark it is inside his box. Poor little Arfie. I do wish he could have found a home, don't you? Surely this book's not going to end this way. Do you think it will? Let's see if there's something else. Oh, my goodness, the sun's out, and he wakes up, and somebody has put a note, taped a note to his box with a heart on it, and it says to Orphe, <clears throat> and he's looking at it like, what in the world is this, and who could it be from? Mm, let's think a minute. All the other people had turned him down, hadn't they? So who in the world... <laughs> Could this be from a note to Arfie with a heart on it? Hmm. Just think for just a minute. Well, let's see if the next page will tell us. He opens the envelope, and this is what it says. Dear Arfie, can I be your person? I need a friend who will be with me no matter what. Snow, rain, heat, or gloom of night. And I see that you already know everyone on Butternut Street. I know you'll make a first-class partner. With hugs <laughs> and head scratches, Mitzi Whipple, your letter carrier. Oh, this like the mail lady. And P.S. Postscript, she says, if you agree, meet me at the big blue mailbox. I'm going to read that again. Can you believe this? Dear Orphie, can I be your person? I need a friend who will be with me no matter what. Snow, rain, heat, or gloom of night. And you know that's what the postmen and post ladies have to do. They have to get out in all kinds of weather, don't they? 
And I see that you already know everyone on Butternut Street that turned him down. I know you'll make a first-class partner. With hugs and head scratches, <laughs> that means she would scratch his head. Mitzi Whipple, your letter carrier. P.S. If you agree, meet me at the big blue mailbox. Now, do you think he's going to agree? Hmm, I wonder about that. Let's see. Oh, my goodness, and here she is. Here's Mitzi Whipple, and she is standing at the big blue mailbox, and you see these all around town. And she has her hand up, holding it over her eyes, and she's looking down the street. And does she see him? I don't see him. Now, he was going to meet her at the big blue mailbox, remember, if he wanted to uh, live with her. Here's the donut shop. Here's a restaurant, a cafe. Here is, it doesn't say, but this has got to be a barbershop or a beauty salon. It's a barbershop. There's a pole with the stripes and a pair of scissors right here. Here's the library. Here's the gym where people go to exercise. And the sun's just coming up back here. And she's looking, but she doesn't see him. Oh, my goodness. I thought surely he would take advantage of this. Oh, my word. Look. Then she does see him. Look at him flying down the street. Can you see how fast he's going? And he has got that letter in his mouth, and he is carrying it to Mitzi Whipple, the letter, lady letter carrier, and loving her, and he's just licking her cheek. Oh, he's so happy. He has found a home, and I am so sure that she will be a good, good a person for him to live with. And here is what that letter says that he gave her. Dear Mitzi, you know what? My tail has been watching, wagging ever since I got your note. My answer is yes. Truly yours, Arfi. And P.S. he says, woof, 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 woof. <laughs> that means he's so happy. And look over here. He's smiling, and she just read the letter that he said, yes, his tail's been wagging, and yes, she, he would live with her. And she is scritch scratch. She is scratching his head just like he wanted. Isn't that book precious? Oh, I think it is so, well, such a good book, so nice. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, let me tell you something about books. Well, when I first started doing story time, I used books that were my own, <laughs> that had belonged to my children or my grandchildren, books that I had used when I taught school. and uh, But I've run out of those, almost, or, or, or the ones that you would like to hear. So I've been going to the library here in Wadesboro. And the name of that library is Hampton B. Allen Library. And they have some of the nicest people <laughs> working in there. And they have the nicest selection of children's books, so the last few weeks, I've been going up to the library. Now, I want you to get your parents, your mother or dad or grandparents to take you or just go by themselves if they have to and go to the library and choose some books and check those out and bring them home. Choose some books to read to you or for you to read. And I think you will thoroughly enjoy it, especially during this time when we're, we have to be so cautious and careful about getting out, you know, around other people, and maybe you have to stay home a lot. So I think it'd be a good time to go to the to the uh, Hampton B. Allen Library and pick out some books. I've been going up there every week lately. Now I hope you'll be back with us next Thursday at 10 o'clock for story time. I hope you have a good day and a good week. And remember, I love you, and God loves you too.
so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God My God is so great, so strong and so mighty.